It's more t-shirts over there, uh, Asiata, she got, she's taking that spot. So whatever you need is in the box.
Bobby LaBelle, Shotgun graduate, Eric Lemon, and Cook Rodman. They're all from the village, y'all. Right. Right. And before, before I forget, please look out for June 29th. It's been a long time since y'all folks went over to Sugar Hill on most of them the county. I'm just saying. So on Saturday, the group family, on Saturday, June 29th, it's going to be three women in their song. You're going to have some jazz. You're going to definitely hear some blues. But to keep you off the floor, keep you on the floor, and keep that blood circulating like we need to so much, I'm going to have some R&B. Okay. So be looking out, you there'll be some there? postcards put no, out. No, I'm saying, when did you ask for oh, just before we came over here? But uh, oh, come on, let's support it, because we know what's going to happen if we don't support our venue, right? Because I was the one that was doing that, but she probably didn't. You got to hold on tight.
Cause the Creator gave me love. Yes, He did. Yes, He did. Even in your darkest moment, you don't have to worry. Cause He gave. And especially that Queen Sister King, I don't know where she be. There she go. Oh yes, she is. Let's please give a round of applause to the fabulous warrior queen, Miss King.
Hi, I'm Carlton Morrell out here at the Fulton Art Fair. I've been a member of the Fulton Art Fair now since 1979. I've been very active from 79 through to, I would say, about 2000. And during that period of 2000, and probably the last three years ago, I just took a little bit of an absence. During the time from 79 through to about 80, 85, 87, my activity have been quite flourishing. I have been one of the, the, the winners at the Fulton Art Fair for a steady period of about five years. I am very diversified. My work is watercolor, oils, acrylic, pastels. Here at the fair, I'm showing oils, watercolors, and drawings. Apart from being a visual artist, I'm also an art teacher and an art consultant. I teach a program for New York City housing of seniors, and I've been doing this for at least the last 15 years. I also teach the United Federation of Teachers who are retirees. I have classes with them as well. I have also exhibitions amongst many of my contemporaries here, exhibitions in some of the Afrocentric galleries, and exhibitions in mainstream galleries in Manhattan. My activity spans also internationally. I have contracts with a company in England, um, the Bridgman Art Library, and also my work can be seen on Fine Art America here in the United States. Um, I have sold over the years a 
couple hundreds of pieces of my work, both here in the United States and overseas in my birth country, Barbados. Um, I love painting. I love teaching. I love inspiring people with my work in the best way I can. Creativity is a great blessing. And I find that the more I do it, the more I want to do it. And the more I inspire people, the more I become inspired to be a painter. Now that piece is called Bananas. It's really a banana plant with the young bananas and they are beginning to show their presence. And obviously they're not fully grown as yet. This is common in some of the islands in the Caribbean. We used to actually have one in our backyard. And I love being nostalgic in my, my work. I enjoy reminiscing and remembering some of those times growing up as a child. And so I reflect that in my pieces. The second piece, which I call trio, trio because there are three musicians playing drums and a flute. And there's a, 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 one other person in the background, he is merely just looking on. As a youngster growing up, I remember at times laying asleep and I can hear outside of the house guys playing drums and guys blowing flutes. And it was quite musical. It was quite an exciting feeling. And I would get up and open up the window and the, the experience that I would have is pretty much what I see in the painting. Guys outside, lots of times, lots of times there, there are active after leaving someplace having a drink and they want to become musical. And so I enjoy doing this particular piece. It's called Trio. It's an oil painting on canvas. The third one at the top is called Evening and Sunlight. Evening and Sunlight is representative of some of our earlier types of houses in Barbados. And they like to refer to them as chattel houses. And the term chattel represents that you can literally dismantle the house, put it on a flatbed truck, and move it to another neighborhood and rebuild. I like these old historic types of landscapes because the reminiscence of it, the reminiscence of it always brings out a certain nostalgia and history that some of our visitors to the island enjoy and some of the very people who live there enjoy. Again, that is called uh, evening and sunlight. Watercolor, that's the one with the child on the back embraced in a kind of fabric setting. I'm not sure what it's called, but it's naturally known throughout the African nations and countries and, and also parts of the Caribbean. I titled the piece Safety. Naturally, safety first. She's taking care of her child. She has to be moving around. She needed her hands free to do other things. And so the safety of the child in, in place, she knows everything is taken care of. She doesn't have to worry. That piece is a watercolor. It's done on watercolor paper and it's framed under glass. Directly under safety is beach rock. It's a famous rock known also again in the island of Barbados. The location of that is called Bathsheba Beach. I love the serenity. I love the, the passive feelings that one enjoys in that particular area. It's good for viewing. It's good for sunbathing. And I also enjoy the, the, the landscape. I, I have a, a collection of clouds overhead 
romanticizing a sense of softness and pinkness, which gives it a sense of feeling of coolness and calm while, the eight, while at the same time there are movements of waves around the rock. Once again, that piece is called beach rock. So directly underneath the, the beach rock, this is a piece I call out to sea. There is a general a figure, a, a male figure sitting in the boat relaxing after fishing. And he's somewhat taking an easy time to reminisce probably or think about what his next catch would be, how far out to sea he may have to go. But he chose to anchor his boat. If you notice, the style is somewhat impressionist. I painted this piece not with a brush. I painted it with a palette knife or painting knife. So if one gets close to it, you will see that the paint tends to be pretty heavy in places. This piece is done on oil, it's done on canvas. It's an oil painting. And it is very easily seen in many places on the island where you have beach water. Now we have this figure that is gazing almost in a profile fashion and the title of it is Gazing. It's a young boy who used to be hanging around in the neighborhood a lot and I asked him to model for me which he did and I like the profile look. Although it's not 100% profile, uh, I like the look, the sense of coloring, and the sense of, of directness in his eyes. Like he has some, some plan of action. Something is occupying his thoughts and his mind. And I try to capture that in the work. This piece is oil on canvas. Style of Impressionism. Standing by the beach, man with a hat on his head. He's standing, looking away from the water into the landscape, which is not seen in the, in the painting. But he is thinking between, should he go out to fish? Should he not go to fish? He had some fishing. It wasn't successful. Something like that is going through my mind at the time I was executing this painting. Um, I, this particular piece is acrylic. It is done on canvas. And once again, like most of my work, it has that nostalgic feeling of experiences I've had growing up on the island, the island of Barbados. So this piece, I do not re recall the title, but it represents uh, a house in Barbados and I chose to have some foliage around it to create a feeling that it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be standing all by itself. So tropical foliage, you have the coconut palm trees in the background, and you have some floral uh, plants in the foreground, and some kind of a sugarcane plant to the left of it. Here I'm handling this piece done with. Um, Graphite pencil, and graphite pencil works similar to charcoal or works similar to uh, numbered pencils. This piece was done at about five years or so ago, and it is on paper, and it is framed under glass. Yeah, I was just walking through Prospect Park one day carrying with me my camera, my sketch pad, looking for ideas. And I found this gentleman laying on the bench. I, you know, knew something wasn't right. And the, the least I could do for him, I offered him a nice piece of change. And I asked him if he would sit and let me take his picture, which he, he did. And I photographed him. And from this emerged this, uh, this portraiture. Uh, this is done uh, 
again this is done in graphite pencil it's it's a it's a it's a it's a medium very similar to charcoal this is very similar to charcoal i've done several pieces of this particular gentleman and i've grown accustomed to his face <laughs> very pleasant looking looking uh he, he could be my grandfather or something like that okay now uh, the final piece last but not least um this is a watercolor this is a scene here in the upstate new york place called skohari close to albany i had spent some time there uh, where I was part of an artist group and I got busy around looking to see what I can paint what might interest me and easy to do some quick watercolor sketches and quick watercolor paintings and this piece grew out from that as you can see it's like a farmhouse the beautiful reflections in the water and it's it's a very, to me, it's a very interesting piece. Yeah. So this body of work represents a very small collection of my work. I, I, I must have close to 300 pieces of, of artwork and a couple thousands of prints and reproductions. And so I hope you can get to the Fulton Art Fair and those who can't will see my work sometime in the near future. Hello, I'm Donna Mason. This is my debut here at the Fulton Art Fair. Actually, it is my debut as an artist. I have five pieces here. And um, basically, I've been functioning as an agent or an artist manager. So now I'm coming out as an artist. Um, I've always been someone who assisted artists in some way. So it took me a while to come around to assisting myself. I am a trained journalist, so I've always done marketing for artists or write articles on artists or even do TV interviews on artists. So now I'm here representing myself. Donna Mason debuts as an artist. So it's, um, yeah, so it's actually the first two a part of a series. Um, they're called Man Bites Dog, and they hark back to my journalism background. Um, it's a journalism aphorism that says if a dog bites a man, that's not news, but if a man bites a dog, then that's news. So these are actually um, a gentleman who gets up in the morning, and this is how he gets his news. This is the future in terms of an app an app that you read your news on. So that this piece um, is, is part of another series I'm working on called the Tabanka series. Um, Tabanka is a Trinidadian word that means heartbreak. So it's about going through stuff. The colors are quite beautiful, so it doesn't evoke heartbreak, but I've had a pretty good life. So it speaks about the good life, but at the same time, it's about my, you know, going through stuff. So um, the top piece, it's, it's, it's a collage mixed media type piece with some um, oil pastels. The top piece, um, the first idea came out of um, me being in Dominica and sitting on my friend's veranda every day and seeing a plant in front of me that had the same sway of the headpiece. So it occurred to me at some point, to, that's a hat. And so that was the beginning of the piece. Yeah. It's called Firmly Rooted, and it speaks to who I am um, with, uh, with all the veneer that a woman puts on herself, irrespective. I'm still grounded and still rooted as a woman of the soil. So that's actually a self-portrait of my stomach um, and my waist beads. I make waist beads. Um, it's something that I got out of the culture of dance. Uh, um, it came to me out of the culture of dance. Most of the women who do dance African dance um, are heavily into the culture, tend to wear waist beads. So I used to make them and sell them. So that's basically a self-portrait of me on another level of who I am. So um, the one on the left, I, it was taken about 2014 in Barbados. Um, 
I tend to go, I was going to Barbados every year um, doing a marketing for a Caribbean, organi a, a Caribbean art fair. And I just happened upon it. I liked it because of the patina and the texture. So that's actually called Barbados. And the one on the right, um, it was taken recently about um, May, I believe, at the Broad Foundation. They were having a show on Basquiat, and there was a gentleman who I just saw that was taking a picture of Basquiat, and I thought it was a very opportune moment. I, it's called I, I, um, I Love Being, and um, the piece that hit me the most was what was written on his jacket, I Love Being Black. So that's what it's about. All right, so welcome. My name is Omari Maynard. This is my first year at the Fulton Art Fair. I appreciate the vibe. I appreciate the energy. Uh, I just appreciate everybody here. So just a little bit about me. Um, I'm a teacher. I'm a student. Uh, I'm a father. I'm a son. I'm a brother. Uh, I currently teach at Midwood High School. I'm a high school teacher teaching geometry and algebra to special ed students. And this is what I do in the time where I'm not in the classroom. Um, a little bit about myself, I graduated from Hampton University, so I'm an HBCU grad alumni. I went to LIU Uni University and also went to UCF. I uh, studied various things such as marketing, business, for business management and education. Um, but <laughs> ultimately my passion is art um, drawing, sculpting, painting, and just creating. So um, our first piece, Big Yon, was made in 2015. Um, the reason why I chose this piece was I wanted to show Big just in himself and his incompletion. And I was mainly focusing on his face. The only reason why I was mainly focusing on his face is because I wanted to make sure that the crown was represented and the reason why I'm using this city map as his crown is because he's the king of Brooklyn. And essentially, Brooklyn is the best borough city in the world. So he's the king of the world. Uh, Tupac on the right. Um, this particular piece um, is a speech that he said. Well, not really a speech, but it was a rant that he went on after he was convicted for rape. Um, this is the speech that he spoke to people about. Um, as he was talking to the camera. Uh, and it just basically represents, you know, him, even though he's an artist, you know, he's struggling to kind of find himself and embrace the American society and a society that's not, you know, embracing him at a point where, you know, that he kind of needs them the most. So um, the black flag just represents the struggle of, you know, him growing up in an American society and just being oppressed by people who, you know, was loving him one day and, you know, victimizing him the next. So this piece uh, is just one of the classic films of all time, The Me Juice. Um, you got the juice now. This is, you know, Tupac and Omar Epps kind of big debut into the film um, industry. Um, but the reason why I chose the colors is specifically like the transparency within each of the individuals is because as a team, they, you know, they were a team until, you know, um, circumstances kind of broke them up. And I wanted to show the transparency because of the fact that, you know, each person has to know themselves. They have to be transparent with who they are. But when you're transparent with, with who you are, you know, dynamics change. And as we all know from this classic piece, the, these four, you know, boys, the dynamics totally changed and, and things went totally left. You know, so it's just important to know who you are, um, you know, and know who the people are around you. You know, hence, you got the juice now. That's, all right, so the piece that we're looking at now is part of a, a three-part series. Um, I use these pieces in my altar space and then also to you know, put small plants, house plants, things of that nature. But this piece in particular represents water. Um, it's made of acrylic paint, wood, resin, crystals, and stone. Um, so I use this when I'm when I need to, the spirits to 
bring out certain energies. So and then again, this energy represents water, it represents fluidity, it represents um, power as well. So when I'm feeling like I need to be charged up by fluidity and power, this is the piece that I use. All right. So this next piece, this is my newest piece. Um, I call this piece NYC BIG. Uh, and it just basically represents Biggie Smalls wearing the, the New York City map. Um, but, you know, in this classic Kooji style. Uh, the most difficult part about this piece was getting the train lines to, to form a certain part of his body um, and to make sure that those connections were true to, you know, um, you know how somebody's body really is. Um, but this piece was made from, like I said, uh, I've used about four New York City train maps and then um, I use graphite pencil and also charcoal. So this piece is one of my um, earlier pieces too. I made this in 2015. It's, this piece is called The Heart of the City. So the three um, smaller paintings is a, is a picture of Jay-Z. And um, if you opened him up, then he would bleed Brooklyn. So that's what the red coming down on the New York City map represents. Uh, the outline that's in, done in spray paint is the outline of the Brooklyn borough. And of course, the Brooklyn that's going down, you know, if you open them up, like I said, it represents Brooklyn all through and through. Um, the reason why I really enjoy this piece as well is because at night, when you turn off all the lights, the Brooklyn map and then also the word Brooklyn uh, glows in the dark. You know, to, you know, just ever let everybody know Brooklyn is the best borough, the best borough in the city, it's the best borough. Therefore, it's the best place in the world, because New York City is the best place in the world. So. All right, this next piece is called Nefi. Uh, it's a piece of Nefertiti. This is done with completely spray paint. Uh, the reason why I really like this piece is because if you look closely, um, that blue area is a checkered area as well. And if you peel off these little pieces of the blue, then you get the yellow. So what I wanted to do was just represent and just show that even though it's not necessarily balanced on each side with blue and yellow, the, and each triangle, I'm excuse me, each square or diamond piece within those are not necessarily perfect, when they all come together with the picture, it helps it stand out and it represents perfection, just as Nefertiti is. All right, so the piece on the left here is the second part to the three-part series. I call this piece Fire. Again, uh, it's made of, this one in particular is made of acrylic paint and resin. So I use this um, when I need to be charged, when I need that fire energy to come out, then this is the piece that I use and focus on. Uh, the piece on the right is called the Supremacy of God. On it, on it, it has an indinkra symbol, which means Supremacy of God. Um, this piece was done with spray paint and then also resin. So again, when I, when I need that presence, that, you know, that physical and you know, manifest the presence of God, um, this is the piece that I turn to. So that is the third piece in this three-part series, which is water, fire, and supremacy. So the piece on the left, I call Mom Mother Africa. It's pretty much of an abstract design of how I feel like a strong African, a strong, beautiful black woman is. Uh, the piece was created um, initially off of the heart in the middle, and then everything was designed around the heart. Uh, the left, I guess you could call it the left thigh, is uh, the actual continent of Africa. And then the bottom foot piece is Madagascar. And then again, all these pieces, they come together to create a strong black woman. The piece on the right is what I call a warrior princess. Uh, it's, I mean, it's based off of the Black Panther movie. I mean, uh, it's kind of self-explanatory. I just love the piece because of the, you know, it's simple in terms of the color pattern and, and use is only essentially four different colors used. But, you know, the, the piece to me is in the way she's looking at me, you know, or, and looking at you as, you know, she is strong black woman, strong black princess, warrior. Now, our last piece on the bottom, I call Woman Strong. 
Uh, what this piece represents, obviously, is a rendition of you know the classic World War II um, women's women's work movement. However, this piece in particular, um, I really wanted to focus on making the outside kind of dark and you know just runny in terms of just showing the, the struggle, but still having that translucent, that white, that and then you know that muddled red in the middle to show that even though there's so much things that are going on around her and on her, she's still strong, determined, and, and clean. Beautiful, woman strong.